I'm here with the Ripperverse man, Eric July. It's Primetime 99. We've squashed the beef. There's no beef. It was just a misunderstanding. Yo. So all the haters, just shut up. What do you want to tell them, Eric? Uh, yeah, we got it figured out. We had a nice discussion right outside. Or the, the Blaze. Uh, 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 the Blaze at the building, and all is good. So. We're A-OK, -okay, guys. And go get the Ripperverse today. Ice him, too, yes. coming out. Yeah, yeah, My yeah. man, Eric's the man. We're all good in the hood. All right, yes, peace. Sir. Hi everybody, this is the comic book guy, the amazing, spectacular, terrific, the great one, the people's champion, your host, the hunter, welcome back to the comic book guy. hope you like this video, hit that subscribe button, I'll tell you, Eric July is quite the interesting character, I've said this many times, he's been doing videos on him, and just seeing his reaction, just, just a little brushback, I and mean, just a little criticism about his, his books, and, and really the artwork and the story, of Esam 1 and 2. And I, I find it, it's amusing because this is a guy that has spent years on, on YouTube criticizing, uh, really stuff that's not important. <laughs> you, know, you know, comic books, movies, um, and now that he's had a little criticism thrown his way, um, from different circles, the biggest circle was obviously that Chalet, that Abyss, that Dark Hole, New Jersey, uh, from Ethan Van Skyver, uh, he is sort of every day it's something else. Now on Tuesday, as you saw at the beginning of this video, I posted they posted uh, Eric July and Eric and uh, Alex Stein posted the video saying that their beef was over. They didn't have a beef. They were the two employees being told what to do at their job. So there's no beef. Okay. We know that Eric July cried about the fact that he was going to be going into a debate with Van Skyver about comics. And obviously, a guy that has built his whole persona around, uh, you know, debating people didn't want to debate somebody. He's walking away from debates. There's no discussion. There's no throwing around ideas. I don't want to hear it. Don't tell me nothing. It's basically his attitude. And obviously, we know the whole brush up, the blowback from all this, not that this debate being canceled by the Blaze. I, I can't imagine that the, the Blaze had seen, I'm sure, that watching his, his uh, behavior over the last few weeks does not make them look good. And I think they kind of, that's why I said in a couple of videos, saying they probably decided that, you know, Eric, uh, it's not a good idea to debate Van Skyver. Um, because some of the things he's saying is valid, if not most of it is valid, and you need to sort of not put yourself in this. And I think he's like, he, he didn't want anything to do with it either. He didn't want to have to answer any questions. Like I said, he's not used to getting any kind of criticism. And I wonder if he's understanding that he's getting an education, that this is not a regular product you put out in the market. This is a comic with a very unique audience. With a very unique look at the world and a very unique take on a lot of things. Okay. So I don't know if he grasped that idea. This is not like putting out something, you know, on a shelf that isn't like something, um, like say food or clothing. Uh, this is a very different market. It's very unique to itself. I don't know if he understands that. And that, that's besides the fact uh, we've had all this sort of horrific artwork, horrific stories, and really just just miserable uh, professionals in the industry. I don't, and you and you mix that together with a very specific audience that is very unique to itself. I don't know if he understands that. It took me a long time to understand that myself. So, well. Again, Van Skyver has been doing these trash casts, goofing on Eric July. And Alex Stein, the conservative comedian, is also an employee of The Blaze. It was also was founded by uh, that crazy guy, Glenn Beck. Now, I like Glenn Beck. A lot of stuff he said about 15 years ago turned out, unfortunately, correct. Hopefully, uh, we're going to start seeing stuff turn around. I get the feeling that things are going to turn around. Uh, I have, I, my negativity is not so much... Uh, in the real world as it isn't, say, other things. But anyway, so I'm going to play you a clip, see where it goes. 
And this is Stein showing up on the on Comic Artist Pro Secrets. And uh, we'll see how this goes. This is it's very interesting. Alex Stein comes across kind of as a nice guy. He doesn't really want to get in the middle of things, but he threw himself in the middle of this. I don't know how this was received back with the blade. So here we go. Got me famous on the internet, and I see the 3,000 live viewers, and I'm such a, a fame war. I have to get on this. So you got my name in there, dude. I got to squash it. You're always welcome. Now, first of all, you should know, Alex. I have no beef with you at all. What? Well, I know that. I know that. Okay. I know that. Right. What's with this beef? This is like an old Wendy's commercial. Remember the Wendy's commercials, the old lady? What the hell is this all about? Beef. I'm not mad. And, and, and to be honest, right. the situation. I have to, listen, I want to sit here and talk all night about it, but let's be real. I was trying to set up a debate. Right. I was trying to cause drama, stir it up, yeah. you love. And, yeah. and listen, this is one thing I also didn't realize. Ethan, you have 3,000 live viewers right now right. on YouTube watching you bash Eric July. That's insane. No, and people work all day long to try to get that audience. And all you have to do is, it's called fading somebody. People fade me. So this is what I'm saying. I'm also empathetic when, because I, I have people that you know kind of make their content about me. Right. So what I'm mm-hmm. saying is, I, I am in the wrong, and really, I don't even think what you're doing is really that wrong. Criticizing him, I'm not saying that, but me trying to stir the shit with him, who is an employee where I work. Now, why did un- you do that, dude? What were I you know, doing? Did you realize it when you were doing it? I mean, did you realize that like uh, this is going to cause some conflict here? I will say this. I applaud him. That's a man after my own heart. I'd love to see that stuff. I love doing that at work. My job. What a few people. It makes me laugh. Because uh, the way you put it across, and you got to know who Eric July is. Eric right. July has really, zero sense of humor. Even, zero. I let you talk. I really, I, I know Eric July is 2019 Eric July when he would, would call people crackheads on the internet. I swear, that's the content I remember. Sorry to yell. I'm not trying to yell. Remember? Well, I just, I don't, I'm not in the comic skate. I'm friends with Cecil and, and Anna, but that's about my closest connection. And I, listen, there's a lot to be jealous over there, dude. He's had instant success for people like you that's worked a lot longer in the industry. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of real reasons why people should feel animosity towards him. And listen, he's not mm-hmm. perfect. Well, you don't think so? You don't think people feel animosity? Mm-hmm. Say, no, not for the success, Alex. I think um, I think everybody was happy for his success, right. uh, including myself. Me too. I worked to promote him and to see that he did well. Uh, I think the animosity comes from his uh, subsequent actions. Right. Uh, which Agreed. is one. The main thing is he's coming after crowdfunding. Right. I want you to understand, this is a guy who magically came up with $200,000 to make his own comics. He's a key uh, to point. To start out before he even sold them. There, there's nobody in this space who can afford to do that. Anybody right. who has $200,000 is not going to spend it making comics. They're going to spend it buying a house, making a life, starting a real business. This is a money and time sink. So crowdfunding is vital. This guy comes out and says, my comics are ready to go. Now, this is the thing which was kind of talked about during this live stream was that uh, where did Eric July get this money from? Did he get this from the Blaze, which is a big corporation now, uh, and they get a lot of money, they get a lot of donations. They're a big, big business. Um, according to Van Skyver, Ben, ben Shapiro, uh, uh, I guess, wrote to him and asked him about comics. So I know that a lot of conservatives are very interested in this medium, so because obviously we want to get our message out there about you know limited government, God, and all this, and they want to get this out. So it wouldn't surprise me if the Blaze has been doing this or wanted to do this. So they do have a stake in the success of Eric July. The last thing they sure they wanted was for Eric July to do a debate with Ethan Van Skyver and makes a fool of himself because he doesn't know what he's talking about. Because the more you read about some of the stuff he's, he's talking about, what it is, what it is that he doesn't seem like he has a grasp of all the stuff that he needs to know about. And he has been, sort of the, the behavior has been very erratic. 
So they want him to go in a line. It would not look good on them for their investment for these books to be done. done. First of all, he, it's, it shouldn't have been a situation where they had all those 3D assets used so heavily in these two books, this flagship book. Um, and then he's defending it, and then after the fact, well, you know, he should have done that before the fact. But he's never done a comic before, you know. That's the one thing that's interesting is that he, he had all this success, and God bless him. But he's never done a book before, <clears throat> you know. And it seems like he thinks, well, I put a product out, I got a name on it, it'll do well. You know, you, know, you, you just don't know that. Uh, these people who are taking your money and sitting on it while they make comics for however long it takes to make comics, uh, he denigrated people who are using crowdfunding, and he's trying to close the door on crowdfunding, which will essentially make him the only game in town. Alex, I cannot tolerate that. That is not something that I'm going to sit and uh, put up with, not something that I'm not going to clap back on him about, because I represent a whole lot of people who use crowdfunding to make Good comics, not shitty comics, uh, and that's right. the uh, that's the main debate. Now that's the main problem that we're having, Alex. Uh, that's the main butting of heads. Ethan, listen to yourself. You're a talented artist, and you give a fuck. Oh, oh, yes, I know. Of course, do, but it's not going to kill crowdfunding. You're smarter than that. And who, like, who? I mean, who gives a fuck how somebody raises money for a comic book? And this is one. This is another thing, and I have to call this out, which is my personal opinion. The chat can beat me up for this. But if he made a comic book of corporate clip art and he sold a million copies... I have a question. Didn't he do a comic book about uh, 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 management? <laughs> Wasn't that what the second book was about? Time management? So, you know, I, I'll say this. Um, there's nothing wrong with crowdfunding. Um, I understand from watching this live stream that uh, Richard C. Meyer has taken some bad advice has completely cut off any kind of um, communication with him and his backers. He's not doing any more videos. Uh, and I guess it's from the advice of Eric July, who's never done a crowdfund, who is just getting into comics as a creator for the first time, and as Rita Ricciardo has shown, he's doing something very strange and very weird, and a lot of people are not too happy about it. I'm going to have to bring back the homeless report because obviously I might be the only one that could probably draw him out of the out of the shadows. So I'm going to probably have to do something the next day or two and maybe bring in my bubbly friend to have to deal with him. But be that as it may, uh, to go back to Eric July <clears throat> and finish this video with Eric July, He's had a has done a great job, uh, an enormous success for comics. That's that's in dispute. He's done a great personal, uh, he's done a great personal success himself. But according to some people, including Eat the Man Skyver, those two books were terrible. I would hope that uh, Alpha Core is better. You would think they would be better. You know, Chuck Dixon is the writer. Uh, Joe Bennett is the artist. The art looks great. But you you can't, like, um, forget the fact that Isam is the flagship character. And if the flagship character is crummy, how is he justifying charging $35 for books? I was looking on the website the other day, kind of curious to see, you know, if it's still $35. I couldn't believe it. That shit is still thirty-five dollars. That's a to me. That's a rip off. I don't care how many pages the book is. It's a hundred pages. I really don't care how many pages it is. Uh, thirty-five dollars for for a comic book for any kind of book. Uh, you know, that's a, in a graphic novel form. That's way too expensive, especially for a guy that's never done it before. Uh, they sort of put my consumer advocate. A hat on for a moment. It's extremely expensive. Uh, now he was able to make a lot of money, made an enormous amount of money, got an enormous amount of backers in that first book. You know, 40,000 people, was it? And then 20,000 people in the second book, 60,000 people purchased that book, those two books. That's, that's amazing. 
But that is a lot of money to ask for people, especially in this economy, when the inflation is through the roof and the artwork isn't good, the story isn't good. Uh, it seems like there's self-inserts with, with uh, July. Um, so, I mean, I would hope that he's learning from this. His his basic things. Well, I I hired the Saska sisters to, to, to do this this female book. Two big time SJWs, which is very strange, to get two women to do a female book. And then you have Kane and White is going to take over. You can have two artists on the on Esob going forward. The the artist that does the work, and then someone to proofread it and, and proof art it. He wasting a lot of money hiring all these people. But obviously, he, it's pretty obvious that the Blaze is, is backing him in a big way. Uh, that they bankrolled the beginning of this company. Hey, whatever. That's, that's fine. But the fact that they don't want to uh, sort of admit to it, that's problematic. I'm sure this will be problematic with uh, Al Stein going on Ethan's channel on, on, on Tuesday. Um, he seems like a nice guy, but I th he again, he doesn't understand his audience either. Is a very prickly uh, audience. And at any point, in any time, uh, they'll turn on you. It's just how it is. And Ethan's audience is very different. It comes from, I think I said this, Ethan's audience comes from three places. YouTube, obviously. Twitter. And his old fans. Fans that just, just follow him and buy his work. I was one of these people that uh, used to buy John Byrne's work all the time. Really from 1984 to basically to 1990, 2000. Anything he did, I bought it. Any, anything. Uh, John Byrne's Next Men, The New Gods, Wonder Woman. Uh, anything that he did, I, I bought it. And then I went over and bought a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff from John Romita Jr. So he does have a fan base that will only that are loyal to him. Whenever he puts a book out, they buy it. And this goes for a lot of great artists. They, they all have the same kind of audience. At least from the old uh, comic book, uh, traditional, get it from the store, get it, you know, online. And then you have these other less traditional ways of him selling artwork, selling books, do X, Twitter, uh, and of course his YouTube channel. Which he has an enormous audience. And he's had an enormous audience. I'm sure his sales over the last uh, few weeks have gone up. So, so I don't know. Obviously, Alex Stein doesn't understand that. And I know Eric July doesn't understand that. Most people don't understand Ethan's audience. Uh, but it's interesting to talk about this stuff because Eric July responds to what Ethan says about him. Um, that's why he's been doing all the smiles. He saw the smile at the beginning of this video. How, like, happy Eric, uh, all of a sudden, Eric July is. So, hopefully you're happy watching this video. Of course, please, uh, watch the length of this video if you can. And, of course, uh, please subscribe to Comic Cut back in the near future for the video. And I'll see ya!